In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to solve a geezer that is not getting hot. Now this happens to be a quick cot, 150 liter, and the principle is the same for all geezers really, and that is the geezer requires a voltage or a supply current from your DB board, so that's this cable here, coming to feed the geezer. In most installations, hopefully you have an isolator, meaning that you can switch this off. Now before you would determine if the geezer is to, to blame, you would have to have checked your DB board to make sure that the output from the circuit breaker feeding the geezer is actually providing a voltage. So if, you've, if your geezer is on a timer, you'll have to check that the timer isn't faulty and that's why the geezer is not getting hot. Now I've already done that. There's no problem in my DB board. The problem is sitting at the geezer. So what I did is I've opened this little cover. It's just three screws, one, two, three. And then I've opened this, I bend this down. Right, now once you've opened this cover, you will find something like this. This happens to be a thermostat, and these are the wires that would be feeding the geezer. The one would be connected there, and the one would be connected there. And I've obviously disconnected them already, because I've already fault traced this problem. Now, you then need to take your multimeter. Here is a multimeter. It measures voltage, and you'd set it to volt. And what you'd be testing, you'd be testing to see that you're actually getting 220 volts coming to the uh, geezer. So in your situation, it would probably still be wired. These would have been in the uh, terminal block, in the terminals, and you'd, you'd measure it. Now, if you're getting 220 volts here, but the geezer is still not getting hot, you'd have to first isolate, is it the thermostat or is it the element? So now I'm taking this, these uh, terminals off here, they are off, I've switched them off at the DB board, there is also an isolation switch to my left and I've switched it off. So this is safe, that is why I can touch these. So just to be clear, you've got to make sure that the power is off. The power is off and that is why I can touch these. I'm not recommending you, you work uh, with elect electricity unless you are familiar with the um, functions of electricity and the dangers right now we have the thermostat now if you look at the thermostat you can pull it out this is what it looks like and this copper rod is there to uh, uh, absorb some of the heat that is taking place in the geezer and what it does is it takes that heat <clears throat> and it's got some bimetal plates in here and when the heat goes over a predetermined level which is set here by this uh, little selector here then the ge the the thermostat is supposed to open circuit and when the uh, temperature inside the geezer is getting too low then it will then close the circuit allowing current to feed through the element and that thus causing heat so you would need to first know if this thermostat is not working now i've already checked this thermostat is working how do you test the thermostat that is quite easy to test the thermostat, you would want to use a continuity measurement. Continuity means it's testing for short circuits. And when it tests for short circuits, it, uh, it actually is supposed to make a noise. There we go. That's telling me short circuits. If I touch this copper here, you can see from that side to that side is a short circuit. That is why it is making that sound. And also on this pipe, copper to copper, short circuit. So in order to test this thermostat, <coughs> What I'll do is I'll set it to the minimum temperature. There we go. And now I will make sure that the 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 wire that is coming in here is translated to this connector here. You see, this is the element. The element wire is there and there. So this might be live and this might be neutral. So the current's got to go through the element. Uh, the, the nichrome wire inside the element causes the a heating effect and then the current leaves. So the thermostat literally is just providing a switch action. So what's going to happen is the, the first terminal here where you would plug in your maybe your live wire must be short circuited to this terminal here. And there it is. And then the return wire coming out, which is on this side, must be short circuited to this wire over there this terminal over there so i can already see that the thermostat is actually in the closed position and if i increase the temperature selector it should actually open let's see okay let's try the other one that one is staying closed so only one terminal it needs to open so let's check this one this is probably the live wire. 
There we go. There we go. You see, so that means that it's above the uh, temperature that uh, you set it, and therefore the geyser must switch off, or the current must stop flowing through the element. Now let's put it below the temperature. Right. So this thermostat is actually working. So there's nothing wrong with this thermostat. So that's why I am now coming to look at the element. So let's remove the thermostat. And here is the element. Now the element looks like this. And I can use a resistance measurement. And I've set it to resistance to measure ohms. And it's telling me 5 or 4 mega ohms. Now 4 mega ohms means open circuit when it comes to a heater now here is a brand new element and i'll just show you what you should be getting now think about this it's just a two kilowatt or a three kilowatt element so the resistance must be very low in order to have that type of uh, current flow or power dissipation so let's actually uh, just put that in All right and brand new thermos uh, uh, element is giving 27 ohms so that's about right so if you work that out and you say the power dissipation is two kilowatts now if the element you're using is two kilowatts and the power supply the voltage is 220 volts to get the resistance we'll say two kilowatts divided by 220 gives us a current of 9.09 .09 amps so using the formula i squared r we can then say two kilowatts divided by that current of 9.1 squared comes to 24 ohms. So that's how we can also check if the ohmerage, the ohmerage of the element is correct. So in this case, it's a 24, it should be a 24 ohm uh, element in order to give us a power of 2 kilowatts. So if it was a 3 kilowatt element, then divided by 220 volts gives us a current of 13,6. 13,6 squared is uh, 186 amps. So if you say 3 kilowatts divided by 186 would be a resistance of 16 ohms. So this also is a method if you're not sure what the um, the kilowatt rating of the element is maybe you're not sure or maybe the geezer hasn't got the the face plates on you could also work backwards finding out the resistance and knowing what rating the element is so if it's a 16 what, what was it a 16 ohm uh, then we know it's a 3 kilowatt if it's a 24 ohm then we know it is a 2 kilowatt now just keep in mind these uh, resistances that you measure are not always accurate as long as it's within 10 to 15 percent and that's it but now as i said i'm just these are just interesting points that i'm adding to this video and obviously it has nothing to do with actually installing the thing it's just extra information hopefully will help you now we need to now swap this element with this one now to do that you need to re release this grub screw here and you would need to release these uh, bolts here now if you do that water is going to come gushing out you so you have to drain the geyser before you start the um, element swap so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to get the geyser ready for draining now i've turned the water off that means that i can actually drain the geyser so i'm now going to install this hose onto the end here there we go and i'm going to rotate it so that the water can actually feed through the hose pipe and onto the ground if you're lucky you might be able to feed this into the tray but beware that not everybody installs these trays correctly and it does leak they kind of just overflow or just in case type installations they're obvious they're not often airtight and often they're cracked in different places so my advice is to use the hose pipe although if you if the installation was done properly you could actually feed this hose into the outlet pipe which is sitting over here right so what i've done is i've made a very short run of the hose pipe feeding straight into the outlet pipe if you have a very long hose pipe it's not going to drain so what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that the run the hose pipe is short and you can help it by releasing the valve on the the overflow valve which i'll show you now it's not mandatory but it can help if you want to if you're in a hurry if you just twist it if you just turn it a little bit it will allow some air to come into the system you can of course loosen it completely 
uh, and then a lot of air will come through the system and the geyser will drain very quickly. Otherwise you can just wait 30 minutes or so while the geyser drains. Right, as you can see the geyser is emptying. It's not at a high rate, it's kind of rolling out. Remember I fed the, the uh, drain cock in, uh, connected to the hose to the, what's it, a 40 or 45 millimeter PVC pipe which is now just falling to the ground. This will take 15 or so, maybe even more, 20 minutes. Once it's finished draining, I'll then go and start loosening the bolts for the element. Right, it is still draining, but I'm going to start loosening the bolts, which are size 13. I'm going to loosen them now. Now, I just use a portable screwdriver to remove these. Back And there's a grub screw here, which is a size 5 Allen key. I'm just releasing that so that we can take the old element out and put the new element in. So there's the grub screw. Keep that safe. For ease of uh, maneuvering, it might be a good idea to just release this earth braid here, this copper wire, just so that I can maneuver a bit. Okay. Let's put it back. Right, so there is the old thermostat, which is faulty, and you can see how disgusting it is. And I can look in the geyser, and I can see that it is, it will need to be wiped here, so it's a good idea to get a lappy. And you're going to take this old seal, clean up here, and put a new seal in. You don't have to always put a new seal, but I have a new seal. Uh, just to for the demonstration purposes. Here is the new seal uh, What you're gonna do is you're gonna now dismantle this and you can see how all this grime is actually the plastic uh, Or rubber shall I say if you see this is what the element I mean the gasket or seal should look like and look at this This is turned into a paste so this was really um, needing a repair. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, separate the uh, element from the this uh, backing here. Push it through. There we go. I just pushed it through. And there you can see how disgusting this is. That's the old element. It's finished. And now, as I said, you've got to clean it up. You want to have a good seal. You don't want it to leak any water. So we're going to clean this up. Okay, so what I recommend is if yours is uh, engraved, if yours is ingrained like mine, I suggest you use a scraper. Now, I've already done the scraping. I'm just showing you what I did. I'm now going to clean it. It must be have a very, uh, I wouldn't say, a mu it must have a clean surface so that it can be flush with the rubber gasket because we don't want leaks there we go okay right so now it's clean now you also have to clean here as well and before i do i'm just going to put this gasket on and if you're doing this on a quick cut geezer this happens to be FLG337, that is the part number for this, they call it a flange. Just fitting it on. You can see how you line up the holes. There's the uh, hole for the earth. And then that's where the uh, element is going. And it can only go one way. And if you look, you'll see that it's got a recess here, and this has got a raised area. And then if you look at the face here, you'll see uh, the, the thermostat tube must uh, fit in there. So that is why it, it can only go one way. Okay, so there we go. And now I'm just going to put the grub screw to hold it in place
and just align the holes for the uh, the bolt the f fixing bolts while you're tightening this grub screw there you go and I'm not making it completely tight now I'm just uh, I'll tighten it further when it's in I'm now just getting it uh, in place right now I'm gonna just wipe this area clean. and don't let the grime fall into the geezer wipe in an outward fashion so that it comes out and I see some has fallen in there and I'm looking in this geezer and it is quite dirty a lot of uh, sand and stuff gets in there now it is time to install the element and the flange or the gasket make sure it's dry when you install it no sediment must be on this flange it must seat perfectly on the opening here and you don't want any sediment because that will interfere with the seal right and it goes in this direction which means the element the bottom of the element is facing down so it's going like this and I'm inserting that in right You can see how when you tighten the opposite side, the other side actually gets loose. And it's very important to follow this sequence of tightening. Right, so it is bottom, top, side, side. And eventually you'll get to a point where they'll all actually get to a, a fair tightness. See, they still, as I tighten that one, it's loosening this one. Now you'll see this one is loose again. Yeah, then we go top. Then we go there. Then we go here. Then we go there. Kind of how you should be tightening wheel nut, wheel bolts on your mag rims. Right, now it's up to you, but the correct way would be to use a torque wrench to torque them all to between 15 and 20 Newton meters. So it's up to you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right, now we just in, tighten the grub screw. And the grub screw is, is just tightening the element onto the steel body. Don't go crazy with the tightening, just till it gets finger tight. See, that's it. It's finger tight. That's sufficient. Water's not going to come out of there. That's it. Don't go crazy. Don't tighten this thing so tight that it snaps inside the element. That's fine. Not too tight. 
for this video I've, I'm changing the thermostat. If you're interested, if it's using a quick cot, it's called a quick therm thermostat 20 amp TH208. And here it is. I'm just putting a brand new thermostat here. It's not necessary as the other one was working, but I'm just showing you. And then what you'll do is you want to set the temperature. I'm just going to set this temperature to, to about 50. And you've got to press this quite firmly in here. It's got to be pressed firmly in there. And now we want to put the earth back on the, and we're going to wire this up. The live is the blue or the red and the neutral is the black. So we're going to loosen these screws here. The live is on the left. So it is going to be this one and Make sure you seat it all the way in and that it's tight. And make sure that it, the, the wires are twisted. Very important. And that must be all the way in and this thing must be tight. If it's not tight, it will arc. It will overheat. And you will get uh, a fire risk. Now this one goes here. Also make sure it's twisted, which it is. Now we put the cap. If you want to, you could leave this open to check uh, for leaks. Uh, but I don't anticipate any leaks here. I'm going to close it. Right, so you close this up. And I'll quickly tell you, uh, to check your area, we've got to un... We've got to undo this pipe here. We've got to close the the drain cock here. There we go. We've got to remove this hose pipe. And if you opened anything on the other side of the geezer, it's time to close it. And it is now time to open the water and allow the water to actually fill up the geezer. Right, so as I said, you open the, the uh, tap, you allow the geezer to fill up and make sure you've closed the stop cock at the bottom. The plate here, yeah, this plastic cover is on and don't switch on yet. First allow the geezer to fill up. Only once the geezer has had a chance to fill up is the time to switch on the electricity. Otherwise the element will be on without being immersed in the water. Right, now you're going to open the hot water tap to release the pressure so that the geezer can actually fill. You can see how the air is coming out and you need to allow the geezer to stop the air with the water. So that's what happens now. You just leave this tap open until it stops pumping air out of the, out of the tap. Right, so you'll leave that on until the air is totally out of the system. At that point, you'll go and switch on the uh, geezer and then you're good to go. And that's how you solve the problem of the thermostat change. I hope this was informative. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.